नमस्कार हेलो डियर व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू द सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन टूरिज्म इन गल्फ कंट्रीज इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू द पार्ट वन दिस एपिसोड डिस्कस ऑन टूरिज्म एंड पॉपुलर टूरिस्ट अट्रैक्शन इन कतार एंड ओमान दिस एपिसोड इज डिवाइडेड इन टू फाइव सेगमेंट्स फर्स्ट टूरिज्म इन कतार एंड ओमान सेकेंड पॉपुलर टूरिस्ट अट्रैक्शन इन कतार थर्ड popular tourist attractions in oman fourth growth of business tourism in gulf countries and fifth desert safaris in gulf countries now moving on to the first episode that is tourism in qatar and oman qatar is another popular arab country for tourism due to its long coastline of gulf and picturesque beaches of white sand and blue water modern architecture with old islamic style and sand dunes etc some of the popular tourist activities are like desert safaris bicycle ride in long desert tracks and beaches tasting the cuisines of islamic religion and arab countries facts about qatar capital city doha area 11571 square kilometer Population 2.169 million according to the 2013 statistics. Languages spoken Arabic, which is the official language. Currency Qatari real. The best time to visit being between November to April. Oman is a country in Arabian Peninsula, bordered by Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and UAE, and has a long coastline with Arabian Sea. Gulf of Oman and Persian Gulf Oman is the best country to visit in Middle East because of its friendly environment and capital city Muscat is ranked as one of the best cities to visit in the world by travel publisher Lonely Planet Oman has numerous historical mosques in its capital Muscat and other cities Oman has attracted lot of tourists for beach tourism and desert tourism activities. Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque in Muscat is worth visiting in tour to Oman. Facts about Oman. Capital city Muscat, area 3,9501 square kilometer, population 3.632 million according to 2013 statistics. Language is spoken Modern Standard Arabic which is the official language currency Omani real best time to visit October to April Now coming to the popular tourist attractions in Qatar The Museum of Islamic Art The Museum of Islamic Art is the perfect example of how beautiful Islamic art is. Museum of Islamic Art in Doha is quite new, opened to public in December 2008, but it immediately became the largest museum in Qatar. It is structured as very modern architecture. The architect came from America and China to complete the museum construction. It was fully ready to entertain the tourist. There is a huge collection of Muslim world art including the Arab, Persian and Africa. There are arranged many exhibitions of arts starting from the plastic art to the clothes of Muslim world. It houses one of the most complete collections of Islamic artifacts in the world. Exhibited items come from Spain to India and visitors can admire collections of ceramics, jewelry, glass, items made of ivory and much more. Al Zubara, northwest of Qatar. Al Zubara is a real ancient region of Qatar. It is located on the northwest side of Qatar and 107 miles away from the capital Doha. The houses are made up of mud and mortar in Al Zubara. The walled coastal town of Al Zubara in the Arabian Gulf flourished as a pearling and trading center 
for a short period of some 50 years in the late 18th century and early 19th centuries before it was destroyed in 1811 and abandoned in the early 1900s. Excavation has only taken place over a small part of the site which offers an outstanding testimony to an urban trading and pearl diving tradition which sustained the region's major coastal towns and led to the development of small independent states that flourished outside the control of the Ottoman, European and Persian empires and eventually led to the emergence of modern-day Gulf states. It is an UNESCO World Heritage Site. al Jazasia. al Jazasia is one of the most mysterious and attractive sites in Qatar. It is one of the few places where petroglyphs are found, which are collections of rare and amazing signs carved in the stones. Carvings found at al Jazasia are considered the most extraordinary in terms of both their quality and their state of preservation. An outstanding 900 gilfs can be found at al Jazasia. Shapes vary from geometric patterns to representations of animals and boats found on two parallel jebels, which are outcrops of fossil and sand dunes. The most common outlines are double rows of seven to nine shapes that look like cups, 333 in total, 193 with seven cups. These cups are believed to have been used for another game called Halusa or Huwaila. It is known in West Africa as Mandala. Similar carved rows dating back to the 15th century BC can be found in the temple of Karnak in Luxor, Egypt. And others dating back to 5th century BC can be found in the same place. Barzan Towers The Barzan Towers emerge above the neighboring landscape and provide the wonderful place to gaze out to the sea. The name Barzin comes from the Arabic for high place, quite appropriate for towers measuring 16 meters in height. Built in 1910 by Sheikh Mohammed bin Jassim Al Thani, they are located at the southern side of the defensive system established in the late 19th or the earlier 20th century to protect the Rauda, the valley where precious rainwater collects from adjacent higher ground. The tower is a rectangular building with three levels as well as an external staircase which is considered an exceptional architectural style in the Gulf region. Doha Cornish The most attractive part of Doha, the capital of Qatar, is undoubtedly Doha Cornish. Doha Cornish is a 7 km, that is 4.4 miles long, palm fringed promenade and dual carriageway, which extends in a horseshoe shape around Doha Bay and the city's seafront. It is lined with luxury hotels, clubs, and apartments, various fine important government buildings lovely open manicured parks with family facilities and public buildings such as museums and a library. The most breathtaking view is of the oyster by the Cornish side. Tourists can visit the famous Hotel Sheraton which is a symbol of present Doha. Qatar National Museum Qatar National Museum is the best attraction for the Qatar visitors. French architect Jean Novel has designed the Qatar National Museum. The museum comprises a series of interlocking discs of varying dimensions and curvatures, which will form walls, ceilings, floors and terraces. Each disc is made of a steel truss structure clad in glass reinforced concrete and the voids between discs is being glazed. There are several kinds of exhibitions arranged at different times of the year. In recent time, the museum is running exhibitions of nature, jewelry, tradition and more. The earliest items date from the end of the last ice age about 8000 BC. 
The Bronze Age, about 2000 to 1200 BC, is represented as are the Hellenistic and early Islamic periods. The museum also has examples of weapons and other objects from the period of the tribal wars and more contemporary decorative objects used for everyday living. Popular tourist attractions in Oman Muscat City Muscat is the capital city of Oman. It is also the trade center of Oman. It was declared the capital city between the years of 1779 to 1792. First, the capital of Oman was the Rustak, but Hamad bin said the great Sultan of Oman did this change. The Muscat city is famous for the fascinating historical sites like forts of Al Jalali and Al Mirani which were built by Portuguese in 16th century. Muscat is the most developed and westernized city with lots of shopping malls, restaurants, bars, sports clubs and entertainment venues. The Muscat festival is one of the most important festivals held in Oman combining the effort of all official, private and public sectors in the country. This festival reflects the magical beauty of the Sultanate, the depth of its history and heritage, the urban development witnesses by the country while preserving its cultural heritage, as well as the customs and authentic Arab traditions of the Omani people. Muscat has improved beyond recognition, but has never lost its pride in its heritage and culture. Nizwa Fort Nizwa Fort is one of the oldest forts in Oman. It lies under the A Dakhiliya Governate. Its height reaches 24 meters with an outer diameter of 43 meters and an inner diameter of 36 meters. This fort has seven wells and multiple openings for stationing the fighters defending the fort. Nizwa Fort was built by Imam Sultan bin Saif al-e-Aribi in the middle of the 17th century. He was the one who expelled Portuguese from Oman. It took 12 years for the completion of this fort. Nizwa Fort is unique among other forts in Oman due to the cylindrical shape of its main tower, which also happens to be the biggest to tower in a fort in Oman. This central tower is 115 feet above the rest of the fortification. Solidly built, the 150 feet diameter structure radiates an aura of might, complete with battlements, torrents and secret shafts. Near the fort and the castle is the traditional Nizwa market famous for its artifacts. Bahla Fort Bahla Fort is one of the four historic fortresses situated at the foot of the Jebel Akdar Highlands in Oman. Since 1987, its name has been included in the World Heritage Sites list. It was built in the 13th and 14th centuries when the oasis of Bahla was prosperous under the control of the Banu Nebhan tribe. The length of its south facet is about 112 kilometers, while its eastern facet is about 114 meters. The wall of Bahala Fort extends up to a distance of 13 kilometers, whose construction dates back to pre-Islamic era. It was included in the list of World Heritage in Danger from 1988, but after the restoration works later in 2004, it is removed from the endangered list of heritage sites. Now. It is one of the best forts in Oman. Bat Tombs and Settlements Bat Tombs and Settlements is included as part of UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988. Bat is an ancient tomb and settlement dating back to 3rd millennium BC. Bat Tombs historical sites are located in Bat, Al Qutum, and Al Ain in. Ah, Dahira region. 
in Vilayat Ibri. Bad Tombs was the second site to be included in World Heritage List in Oman. The site is divided into two big parts. The southern part houses a cluster of graves while the northern part is where a beehive-like structure is situated. Bad Tombs was the second site to be included in World Heritage Site list in Oman. The architecture is similar to the tombs built in the Hafidh period. The main significance of Bad Site is that it is located at the crossroads of ancient trade routes. Historically, the settlers occupying the site were known to get involved in trading with the Sumerians, with copper and diorite were two common things being exchanged. Bad tombs and settlements are considered as one of the best well-preserved archaeological site in Oman. Jabrin Fort Jabrin Fort is located in a small town called Jabrin in Vilayat Pahla, Ad Dakliya region. Jabrin Fort was built by Imam Sultan bin Saif al Ya Arubi in 1670. The fort dates mainly from around 1670, one of several built during the Ya Aruba building boom of the later 17th century. The fort's main building is surrounded by high walls and a gravel courtyard, home to a small mosque. You can also see the deep fallaj, which formerly provided the castle with water to the rear. Jabreen Fort arguably is the most impressive fort in the Sultanate and the details and carvings in the rooms and balconies are most elaborate. Finely painted flowers and symbols are found in the ceilings in the living rooms. Jibrin Fort resembles a remarkable blend of defensive architecture and sophisticated artistry. It consists of three floors and 55 rooms and is penetrated by Falaj Jibrin. Coming to the growth of business tourism in Gulf countries. Business tourism is a lucrative, fast-growing segment of the world's largest industry sector. A business travel or business trip is a travel done in the course of business or work other than the daily commuting between home and workplace. Business travel accounts for approximately 9% of all international travel. Business tourists are less cost sensitive than leisure tourists, spending on average twice as much per day. Their purchase decisions are influenced primarily by their ability to use time efficiently within business travel schedules. Business tourism is much popular in Gulf countries than any other country in the world, especially UAE. UAE has great potential for business tourism. UAE, Qatar, has all kinds of facilities required for a business traveller. There are many major events conducted in Gulf countries and the cost for Gulf countries is comparatively cheap than the other destinations in the world. The business tourism sector currently accounts 20% of tourism in Dubai. Many large-scale events like Expo 2020 is to be organised in Dubai. Despite being a relatively young destination, Dubai has a bright future in business tourism sector. A recent survey that came out for the International Congress and Convention Association showed that the number of associations, conferences and meetings in the Middle East has tripled over the past 10 years than the rest of the world which has doubled. More than any Gulf cities, Dubai has a leading edge on business tourism because Dubai is a global aviation hub with over 7,000 weekly flights. The Dubai airport is operated by 125 flights that connects to more than 260 destinations across the globe. Dubai has world-class infrastructure. It has well-maintained roads and excellent public transport and connectivity. Dubai has wide variety options of flexible business event facilities from meeting rooms for 10 people to convention hall for thousands. 
Dubai International Convention and Exhibition Center DICEC has 90,000 plus square meters of exhibition and meeting space and is only a 10 minute drive or a metro red line ride from the airport. In addition, arrays of hotels in Dubai offer high quality and sizable meeting space. Dubai also has the best hotel properties in the world. There are currently more than 625 hotels with more than 85,000 hotel rooms. Not only Dubai, but there are many Gulf cities like Doha, Riyadh, etc., which has the potential to be the upcoming destinations for business tourism. Business tourism will keep on rising and more business clients will be traveling around the world. Coming to desert safaris in Gulf countries. Desert safaris has gained a lot of popularity from the time it started. The tourists traveling to cities like Dubai, Doha would like to experience the desert safari. It is very pleasant and interesting to see the sands in the desert glowing and shining when hit by the sunshine. One fun activity while on a desert safari is dune bashing. This is an adventurous part of your safari where your jeep or SUV speeds up and down the low and high golden sand dunes. There are different types of desert safaris. Usually it starts at 9 am in the morning and Dubai Desert Safari includes dune bashing, camel safari, sand ski or boat and quad biking. Morning Desert Safari Morning Desert Safari is perfect for visitors who do not have the evening available for them or visitors who are more interested in dune bashing than dining in the desert. Desert Safari Company will pick the tourists from hotel and drive to the desert where the adventure starts. Tourists can enjoy 20 minutes of dune bashing and then you are taken to a camp where you can enjoy quad biking, camel ride and sand skiing or boating. Then you will be taken back to your hotel after the adventure. The morning desert safari is a package of two hours in the desert. The package requires minimum three persons. Evening desert safari. It starts at 3.30 pm to 9.30 in the evening. The tour departs in the afternoon. Tourists will be picked up by a 4x4 WD that is wheel drive from hotel or from any point in Dubai there will be dune bashing and there will be a stopover to see the sunset and take pictures of the desert in the most beautiful color of the day as the sun sets. Tourists or clients have the opportunity to ride a camel, sand skiing or boarding and also can try henna designing your feet or hands and enjoy a belly dancer by the bonfire while sipping shisha that is water pipe. The tourists can also dine in the desert and get served the finest cuisines of your choice. There are no minimum people who can take this tour. Dinner in the desert. A perfect romantic dinner by the desert. Tourists will be picked up from the hotel to the venue at 7 pm and will be directly taken to the campsite. Here the tourists can enjoy Arabic tea or coffee, sand ski, belly dancing, Shisha, henna painting, barbecue dinner and unlimited soft drinks. There is also buffet dinner and vegetarian food is upon request and is also available. The tour needs minimum 4 people. Overnight safari. This tour needs minimum 6 people. This can be an extension of evening desert safari once everyone has left the campsite. The clients will be left alone under the starry night in the desert by the bonfire with drinks and side dishes. The overnight desert safari includes pickup by a 4x4 WD, dune basing, dune driving, sunset photography, belly dancing, bar, shisha and everything that is included in evening tour. There will be sleep bags and blankets for the night. Drivers are licensed, professional and trained in first aid. 
The cars are fitted with seat belts and roll cage to protect visitors from being injured in case of a rollover. It is vital for one to take a camera when going for the safari as it is awesome and breathtaking. Thank you.